Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. It's good to see you guys. I am not turning my camera on because I legit rolled out of bed, <laughs> came to church. So I love you all, but I'm just gonna love you without my camera on. That, we, that is completely acceptable. We're glad you're here, Cindy. <laughs> You'll tell me to. <laughs> yes, you need to just say hey. Everyone's allowed to be chatting it up. <laughs> Bedside Baptist for real, Cindy. Love it. This is how we the new do norm that. is Bedside Baptist. Oh God, I love Bedside Baptist better than I love Holy Biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> It's the name of a counseling service. <laughs> I thought it was the name of Holy a Biscuits. This is a... Holy Biscuits and Bedside Baptist. Coming in. Bedside Baptist featuring Holy Biscuits. <laughs> yep. Didn't tell our church band. Cindy, you made it. There you go. Now she hears me. <laughs> Sorry, I. I had muted my audio on my computer for a minute. Sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. I told everybody that I rolled out of bed to come to church because Jill told me to. I did. And everybody is better for it. I love you. I love you, Cindy. Marcus made it. Now, Cody, did you get your coffee? That's what I just did. That's when I had to go away for a bit. Just made some coffee. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. Yeah, beautiful people. I'll go ahead and put the bulletin link in the chat. And Jill, we're about a minute out, so I'm gonna go ahead and fade out of my music here. Um, we may be a little bit farther than a minute out because I'm getting an error message on live streaming. So, stand by. Okay. We have to wait for the public. Does anyone know who iPhone is? Maybe Aaron. Okay. Admit it, yeah, it could be my cousin. Let's see. Yeah, just because we want to know you, why don't you make your names reflect who you actually are on the side so people can recognize you. So glad to see you, Marcus. Daniel, Normally we start right at 10, 10, but we're getting, sorry, we're getting started on the live feed. So we're taking a couple moments. And Daniel, don't be uh, worried to kind of toss it over to me if you need to.
the Chandlers are here. <laughs> that will never stop being funny. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> but the Chandlers are telling us what, what is what with their fashion and their presence this morning. <laughs> fashion for sure. Definitely. Maybe, maybe, maybe the Megan... fashion side of things. He's the brains. Mm. <laughs> 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 Megan, have you made um, fashion masks yet? Or yeah, I've been not sewing, but no. I've been, um, <laughs> holding them. Um, I have like vacuum filters and coffee filters inside, like all different scarves and bandanas, and mm. holding it around, and so that what holds it on your ears are hair ties. But you that's know, what I use too. Out. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I imagine you have like beautiful fabrics, <laughs> scarves. Yeah, we have, it's like, it's a patchwork. Like we get to, that's the fun of it. Get to pick like, ooh, what color mask am I going to wear today? <laughs> you got to make depressing things fun. I love that's it. Those winter coats. I am actually like. Exactly. I, I stop for a second and I'm like, what color do I want to my, you know, not dying mask to be today. There's kind of a weird like moment of <laughs> joy out of the like terrifying part. So it's mm. great. Yeah. Choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Pandemic, but make it fashion. Yeah, thank you. Lindsay gets it. <laughs> but I mean, let's be honest, if anybody's gonna do that again, Megan Chandler. It's going to take care of that. For Thank you. Us. That's so, it. That's, that's, that's my job. <laughs> that's the real. That's the I real. I have a mask. If anyone needs a fashionable mask, let me know. She's a fabulous <laughs> broad. We all know. <laughs> I love it. I want one of those with like the frilly things coming off of it. <laughs> with feathers. Yeah, baby feathers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like well, peacock feather. Ask for meat uh, mask. Love it. I think we're we're probably close to getting online. So, Kendra, why don't we just go ahead and start? I I don't want to. Yeah. You know. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm up here in the Blue Ridge Mountains. So, um, good morning from the Blue Ridge Mountains. I am Henry Ramon, the pastor here at Park Ave. I use he him pronouns. We welcome you to the server this morning. Um, if you want to follow the bulletin, the bulletin is online, uh, www.parkavbaptist.com, and it'll be in the chat box as well. We encourage you to share uh, our service on Facebook. We encourage you to uh, type in the chat box, uh, amen, interact with us, uh, communicate um, as we go out through the service, just as if we were amongst each other. Um, as you know, we are in our uh, liturgical season of Easter time. We have this month is you can't stop the resurrection. So we're continuing that theme this morning. And we're looking at the injustice and the limbo working towards a a righteous world. Um, despite uh, us being in this situation, um, every day we see resurrection happening somewhere in our lives. So we welcome you to the service this morning. Um, and we usher you in this morning with our first song from Jill. Um, also remember this is our first Sunday, uh, it is May. Yeah, if you can believe it, it is May. Uh, this is our first Sunday, so we will be having communion today as well. So if you could, during the greeting time or any other time, go ahead and grab that juice and that donut or bread or however uh, you want to do it this morning. But we will be um, ushering you and walking alongside you this morning with communion. So you can go and do that as well. So Jill, if you could, uh, guide us with our intro song this morning, Ain't No Grave. Thank you. Hang on. It went out of tune. Excuse us. We're very professional here. Shame. 
name is risen. As cruel as a grave, shame is a robber, and he's come to take my name. Love is my redeemer, lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power, my freedom song is found. And no grave, gonna hold my body down. There ain't no grave. Thank you, Jill. Um, let us prepare, prepare our hearts for the call to worship this morning. There we are. Out of the darkness of grief and despair comes a message of hope, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We remain inside having all that was our priorities reoriented despite ourselves, yet still Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We begin to notice the simpleness of life that we had overlooked. The spider who rebuilds a web on the porch every morning, just in time for you to walk through it, it is time amid all, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. We cherish the hugs we once took for granted, 
Absence makes our feelings grow stronger and communication more steadfast. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. indeed. We run to the tomb to see our, for ourselves, and it is true. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. We hear a voice call our name, and we know our risen Black Messiah is with us now and always. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, risen, Christ is indeed. risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Let us continue in worship this morning. Um, song, all is all are welcome. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. Oh, place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Fill the hopes and dreams and visions, brought of faith and fault of grace. Park Avenue. My name is Daniel Bass. I'm one of the deacons here and serve on the worship team. Um, it is my pleasure to lead you in our time of centering down. This is the part of our service where we get still, where we um, get quiet and just become present to the here and the now, to God present to us in this moment. 
um, God can't be found anywhere else besides this present moment. So if you will join me, I'm going to read a poem written by Joy Harjo entitled Praise the Rain for our Centering Down Moment. Um, if it's comfortable for you, you can close your eyes. Um, whatever helps you get into kind of a posture of receptivity and rest. Praise the rain, the seagull dive, the curl of plant, the raven talk. Praise the hurt, the house slack, the stand of trees, the dignity. Praise the dark, the moon cradle, the sky fall, the bare sleep. Praise the mist, the warrior name, the earth eclipse, the fired leap. Praise the backwards, upward sky, the baby cry, the spirit food. Praise canoe, the fish rush, the hole for frog, the upside down. Praise the day, the cloud cup, the mind flat, forget it all. Praise crazy, praise sad, praise the path on which we're led. Praise the roads on earth and water, praise the eater and the eaten, praise beginnings, Praise the end, praise the song and praise the singer. Praise the rain, it brings more rain. Praise the rain, it brings more rain. If you would pray with me. Holy and great spirit, we give you thanks for this present moment in which we encounter you, in which we counter in each other in which we encounter ourselves. We thank you uh, for the truth that there is a time for everything under the sun, Lord, that there's a time for um, growth and there's a time for cutting back. There's a time for singing and there's a time for silence. There's a time for closeness and there's a time for distance. And there's a time for becoming close again. We ask that you would make us um, grateful for all of that which we do have and god that you would help us give ourselves permission to grieve all of that which we don't have at this moment would you make us hopeful anticipators of the resurrection uh, in our own lives in our own hearts in our own country in our own world jesus would you let your resurrection come in fresh surprising new ways. We pray all these things in the name of the resurrected wounded one, Jesus. Amen. If you have any extra player prayers that you would like for us to lift up as a community, you're welcome to type them in the chat box to one of our um, kind of worship leaders. And we will, if you would like and appreciate, we will share those with the group. Um, we do want to lift up Kevin Garcia, who's on our worship team. Um, they are experiencing extreme stomach pains um, and are going to go to urgent care to get those seen about. Um, so please be praying for Kevin this morning. Um, any other prayer requests that you have, you're welcome to share them with us at this time. Yes, and this time is our greeting time as well. Um, any prayer concerns, as Daniel mentioned, um, please place those in the chat box as well any joys um, that you've seen this week, uh, moments of resurrections um, that we can celebrate as well. Um, but this is a time for you to grab some coffee or juice. I've drank up all of my orange juice, so I need to go replenish that. Um, so this is a time for that as well. Um, and, and the pastors and the leaders will communicate those prayer concerns as they are uh, mentioned in the chat box. So this is the time, uh, we'll give five minutes. The time now is 10.30 and we'll be back at 10.35.
pray for Cindy's daughter, Embry, as she awaits her testing for COVID-19. Let's keep Embry in prayer, y'all. Nicole is praising that she finds herself in a place of, um, of feeling God's light again, being able to, to be productive and get things done. That's beautiful, Nicole. So glad you're here. Again, the reason we have things like this happening um, in terms of having everybody on mute is just because we've had some problems in the past with Zoom bombers, but we will have our time at the end for everyone to talk. Let's remember to hold Cindy in prayer too. She's totally chill about what's happening with Embry. Uh, that's hard. That's your, that's your daughter. Hey, Emmy. Called in, Cindy. Cindy, you've been called in. Hopefully, everyone has gotten their coffee and juice, as I have. Um, we're coming back to the service uh, for a couple of announcements. We have several groups online, um, as many of you may know. Um, we have a Wednesday meditation and morning meetup um, with Pastor Darcy, um, 10 a.m. every Wednesday morning. Um, and on Friday, we have a reimagining prayer, um, a creative way to do prayer and connect uh, to God. That is every Wednesday and every Friday. Um, you can see that on our Facebook um, live or our Instagram. We also have, as we always continue, a second cup uh, at the service. Uh, just a moment for all, all of us to catch up, as part, Pastor Darcy mentioned, where everyone can come off mute and kind of say hey to each other, and we can kind of um, be a community again as well in that in that space. And also, as I always mentioned, we do have our little pantry out front um, of the church, so if you are driving by, please um, bring, like I said, bring some um, canned goods, uh, hand sanitizer, things of that nature that we can put in there, um, if you can find hand sanitizer, but things of that nature that we can put in there that can help those who may be in need, not just food. Um, if you can put a roll of toilet paper now, I mean, it can fit. So all of that can help those who are in need, who may be walking by um, and may need food or things of that nature. So don't forget that as well. Um, our scripture readings is up next. We'll be reading Acts 4, um, 32 through 35. Hear the words from the book of Acts. The community of believers was one in heart and mind. None of them would say, this is mine, about any of their possessions, but held everything in common. 
the apostles can continue to bear powerful witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and an abundance of grace was at work among them all. There were no needy persons among them. Those who own properties or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds from the sales and place them in the care and under the authority of the apostles. Then it was distributed to anyone who was in need. Amen. Amen. May God bless the reading of that word. Of that word. Um, and we have a moment for our young saints. Lindsay, if you could, guide us into that time. All right, young saints, wherever you are, if you're on the Zoom call or if you're watching on the Facebook live stream or watching later, you are welcome. And we are excited that you're here. I, I see a see Miss Charmaine calling for her kids. <laughs> um, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the story that uh, Pastor Darcy is going to be telling us more about in their sermon. So after uh, Jesus had come back and the disciples, I don't know if you remember from last week, but the disciples were so excited. They were so excited about what Jesus had said and about what Jesus had done. And in our scripture reading today, we get to hear about some ways that they were sharing their excitement about the love of Jesus and the love of God. So all of the people who believed in Jesus, it, the scripture says that they were of one heart and one mind, and they were doing things for people who were in need. So if people didn't have a house, they were finding a place for them to live. If they didn't have food, they were finding food for them to eat. Whatever they didn't have, they were sharing everything that they had with each other. And when I read this scripture verse, I think of people being really creative, right? Because it must not have been easy to figure out, well, how do we get this person a house? You can't just poof, there's a house and it's there. You got to do something about it. You've got to be creative and use the gifts that God has given you to get those things done. So I've been playing with this Play-Doh pretty much the whole time we've been in church today. I love Play-Doh so much. It's one of my favorite things. And I've been moving it and squishing it and making different things. And when I think about Play-Doh, I think about creativity and using my imagination because usually when I start out to play with Play-Doh, I don't think, well, this is exactly what I'm gonna make and this is how I'm gonna do it. I move it around in my hands and I kind of think and I feel and I, you know, imagine what I could make with this. And there's another scripture verse in the Bible that tells us that we should love the Lord our God with all of our heart and all of our soul and with all of our mind. And, you know, our minds mean a lot of things. It means, you know, what we study in school but it also means our imagination. God has given us our imagination to do amazing things in this world. And I really believe that y'all, our young saints, our kids, you can use your imagination to make a big, big difference in this world because you matter to God and you matter to this church. So we are so excited that in the ways that God has gifted you and how your creativity and your imagination is going to help change the world. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for each of these kids, each of our young saints. Thank you for the ways that you have shaped them. Thank you for the gifts that you have given them to be creative, to imagine, to imagine a world that is better than the one that we have today. God, we are so blessed. Help us all to look for the ways that we can be creative, the ways that we, whether big or small, or small, can change the world, to change the world in the ways that you've imagined it. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. Amen. Lindsay, thank you for that. Um, children's moment, we have come to our time of offering and thanksgiving. As you know, there's several ways to give here at Park Ave. Uh, main way is by text giving. Um, phone number will be in the chat box um, to text give 470-300-1731. Or you can give at parkavebaptist.com and the link at the top, you can click on give. This is also a time to fill out the visitors form that will be in the chat box as well. If this is your first time visiting with us or you have updated information, 
this will be a good time to fill that out as well. Um, let us pray over our offering this morning. God, we thank you and we come to your throne with humble hearts. As we are so thank you for all of the many blessings that you have provided for us. You have given to us so freely. May we as people of God be willing to give ourselves and our love so freely as well to our neighbors. Bless these tithes and offering today. May it build your kingdom. May it help those who are on the margin, those who are in need. It's in Jesus' name that we all pray. Amen. Let us continue our worship this morning uh, with our special music. I need you to survive. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I need you to survive. I love those words. I need you to survive this notion, but I want to go further. I need you to thrive. I need you to blossom. I need you to bloom. I need you to thrive, to grow and become, to shine and prosper. Poet, Persian poet Hafiz says it like this in his soul, in his poem, Each Soul Completes Me. My beloved, my name is not complete without yours. I am made whole by your life. Each soul, each soul completes me. We're all a part of God's body. May God expand our understanding and experience to truly envision this imaginative, beautiful world, this utopia. I'm Darcy. I'm one of the pastors at Park Ave. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm so excited to welcome you all here, whether you're watching it 
on the Zoom, whether you're watching it Facebook Live or later. We're happy you're here. This is the liturgical season of Eastertide, and we're in a sermon series that we're calling You Can't Stop the Resurrection. You can't stop the resurrection. So as we undertake to study these short verses from the fourth chapter of Acts, let's invite God into the hearing and the speaking of this message. Let's let this message touch us. Will y'all pray with me? God, creative creator, one who creates from nothing, may the words of my mouth and the meditations and imaginations of all of our hearts in the various places we find ourselves right now with distance between us be found pleasing in your sight, maybe even satisfying and delightful to you, God, the one who delights in our living, our God, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. You can't stop the resurrection. It's all around us. You can't stop it. It's in the way we love each other. Last week, Reverend James Blay reminded us that God and love, you can't stop the resurrection because it continues through our deep love for one another. So this week, we take another look at scripture to see where the resurrection is. And I think we'll find it this morning in this imagination and creativity that Lindsay mentioned in the children's moment, this is where we can find God. And we can see a picture of how community, maybe even the kingdom of God, or what we like to call the kingdom of God, is pictured in this passage in Acts. The author of the Gospel of Luke in the book of Acts, we know, is the same person. So we can look and we can talk about themes shared in both of these texts to discover a larger meaning a picture that is throughout our sacred text, but specifically in these two books. This picture is one of countercultural themes and one that we see in the blessing of the poor, the blessed status of those who are marginalized. Right from the beginning in Luke, we see, we hear Mary's Magnificat and we hear of a God who favors the poor. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. In the kingdom of heaven, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Blessed are the poor, we hear in the Sermon on the Plain in Luke 6. The blessing of the poor is modeled through how Jesus calls those who follow him, giving, asking them to give up worldly possessions. When asked by a righteous man how to enter the kingdom of heaven, Jesus responds, sell everything and distribute the money to the poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven. This is a continuous theme, the blessing of the poor, of the poor and by extension and in some places directly the condemnation of those who have, who are rich. We hear in Luke's gospel from Jesus' mouth, indeed, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. The claim in the book, The Economy of the Kingdom, is that at the heart of Luke's message is an insistence on the redistribution of wealth or blessing to those in need. And the author, Moxness, calls this a mandate, a mandate to implement the divine reversal. In the kingdom of heaven, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. These are the claims, but have we seen these come to fruition in real life? We even make claims that kind of sound like this today. They're similar about those in this marginalized community, in this product-based economy. Blessed are the poor today could sound like gratitude to the essential workers. Blessed are the poor. Gratitude to essential workers, yet we keep ordering from Amazon. I'm talking to myself here. Numerous strikes and, and employees that have cited unsafe conditions, yet we say the words and do we act into that reality. Workers need to be blessed. 
bless those workers who can't stay home, keep their families in prayer as they go into unsafe conditions. We've never really known how to bless the poor, how to implement this divine reversal. This is the value that our economy and we place on labor and people. Is this, I need you to survive? Amid this COVID-19 pandemic, we say blessed are the workers who continue to show up, yet do we pay them more? Do we protect our citizens? Coronavirus is a socioeconomic disease affecting those who are marginalized. Coronavirus is a gendered and racialized disease impacting those with weakened immune systems diabetes, asthma, which also happen to exist in communities that have a lack of access to nourishing food or pollution due to environmental racism. We exist within a systemic disconnect today in how economic structures place value on labor and the sharing of possessions. We know this all very well. We understand the wage gap unjustly based on gender, wrongfully based in race, rooted in a history of racism. This is our economy and it has always devalued life. The United States was literally built on the back of enslaved African people. The land of the United States was plainly taken from those native inhabitants, the native people, those originally here. Attempted genocide is our national history. The whole way of looking at human beings and the value of the economy needs to be turned on its head. The divine reversal. Here in the state of Georgia right now, we know this governor, the governor, unilaterally decided that businesses are to open against all re recommendations from the CDC, which is also located here in Georgia. Why, why, why might we declare this so callously? Because the budget was looking low and the state was going to have to pay unemployment. So now many claims for unemployment will be denied. Valuing economic impact above protection and safety and health of our hourly workers is dangerous, so dangerous, and sadly, not surprising. The governor is aware that more people will die if businesses go back to what was normal. Human life is precious. You are precious. We should not have to decide between being at risk and being able to take care of our families and pay bills. But this is the model we have today. This is the corrupt blueprint of a broken system that illustrates exactly the opposite of this biblical ideal. So how do we push, push beyond this nefarious system that guides us toward an ideal and an ethic that, that devalues life toward an ethic that says, I need you to survive. Acknowledging our mutual destiny, our shared eventuality. It's clear that the community described in Acts has a communal mindset. So do we take this seriously? And in that taking it seriously, are we reading it how we should really read this? Listen again to these words from the pericope from Acts. The community of believers was one in heart and mind. None of them would say, this is mine, about any possessions, but held everything in common. The apostles continued to bear powerful witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and an abundance of grace was at work among them all. There were no needy persons among them, those who owned property, or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds from the mills and place them in the care and under the authority of the apostles. Then it was distributed to anyone in need. What a beautiful picture of the church. Maybe it's a picture of the kingdom of heaven, utopia, perfection, shared ideals lived out in community, integrity, faultless. Idealistic, improbable, 
temporary temporary for sure because it, we've read the book of acts we know that this image of the perfect church ends in about 10 verses with the story of ananias and sapphira they couldn't live up to the standard they couldn't share equally they could not give up their passions and they paid true price they paid the price the ultimate price and would say see utopia doesn't work we might say to ourselves to disregard this passage. See, even back then, people couldn't do it. There, these are folks who stood and sat at the feet of Jesus, some of them, and heard images of the kingdom of heaven. They couldn't give up their possessions. See, it couldn't work for us. The early church couldn't sustain this model. In fact, the church in Jerusalem failed. So maybe we're reading this text wrong when we would try to reduce the biblical text to a simple historical literature. Maybe we're using it the wrong way. Maybe we're devaluing the true potential of this verse, which is to say, imagine our futures. We are missing the point. This exists throughout the Bible, this image of the kingdom of God. Luke Timothy Johnson, New Testament scholar, writes in his book, Sharing Possessions, that the community of goods or practice of sharing possessions illustrated in Acts, as well as two chapters earlier in Acts 2, is not a mode of practice, but instead to illustrate how the spirit of God can unify the church. I read this at first and I was kind of like, well, are we rationalizing? Are we, you know, are we looking at this text in order to rationalize how we live today? But what if these images exist as a picture of the resurrection in the form of prophetic imaginings? This is the equitable future that we have to imagine right now. So this text doesn't tell us to do what what to do right now. It tells us to imagine right now. The scripture provides an image of what the church could be. These sacred imaginings are like a captured impression of the resurrection. And like Daniel said, the resurrection and God are right now. So right now, how can we imagine the resurrection? The true purpose of the verses like this in Acts and throughout the Bible are to show what the resurrection could be in what cultural strategists call a poetic intervention, poetry in the sense of creation and co-creation with God. One such culture shifter and dreamer, Robin D.G. Kelly writes, poetry is a revolt a scream in the night, an emancipation of language and old ways of thinking. This is what she writes in her book, Freedom Dreams, The Black Radical Imagination. This is a snapshot of what hope can do. We can envision our liberation. And as Kelly says further on in her book, the map to the new world is in the imagination. So in Acts, we hear the community of believers was of one heart, and one mind. This sentence was reiterated from the text in Jeremiah where the prophet says, I will give you one heart and one mind so that you may worship me all of your days. Acts describes the community who owned properties and houses and sold them and brought the proceeds to the leaders to be distributed to anyone in need. Psalm 133 reads, look how pleasing it is when families live as one, because the Lord God has commanded the blessing, everlasting life. The answer is not as easy as looking at the biblical text or the text in Acts as a blueprint to follow. In that way, we would never have to imagine it ourselves. The sacred scriptures are not prescriptive. They invite us to work. The nuance and context needed in these times have changed, evolved. No prescription would fit, certainly not one from 3,000 years ago. We need to imagine the world anew now. The resurrection is now. To see again the possibility of this moment. What if we read this text not as reality, but instead we read it as poetic? 
as hopeful as a vision or an intervention of imagination for what could be. Imagining a different world is hard. It's harder than we might think. Frederick Jameson, American philosopher and theorist, popularized the idea that it is easier to imagine the end of the world than to imagine the end of capitalism. It's easier to imagine the zombie apocalypse than to imagine the end of racism. It's easier to project forward a meteorite crashing into the planet rather than see the end of patriarchy, right? But this is why art right now is producing all of these images of the, the, the end of the world, this last dying gasp of capitalism, right? We're seeking, we're looking for visions of what could be. You cannot stop the resurrection. This text in Acts arrives to us in Eastertide. So we need to ask the question, how does the resurrection challenge me to think differently, to imagine differently? It is this dream of the new world, this picture of the resurrection that drives us and will fuel us and act as a catalyst to enact change in the world. So we need to be inspired by it. We need to make it right now. And this type of futuristic, hopeful imagining is happening right now. It is. Tony Kade Kambara, American civil rights activist, said that the work of the artist can make the revolution irresistible, right? The revolution is irresistible when we see it through the creative explosions of movements in the past like surrealism after World War II that sought to free our thought or like the Harlem Renaissance that showed us freedom that comes through artistic expressions. Today we see this echoing in the movement of Afro Afrofuturism. This culture and change and growth projects a future that is irresistible. The image of Wakanda is irresistible. Afrofuturism is a social and political cultural genre that projects images, creates black icons and heroines into this fantasy landscape of the future, one that had not been projected forward with people of color, one that is in its very existence a protest. This landscape, this utopia, this is a place of mutual destiny. I talk about Black Panther because it's just the most prominent example, the most popular cultural phenomenon that has come out of this movement right now. This movie was the most popular superhero movie ever. It broke so many awards, highest grossing black fil film with a black director and predominantly black cast ever. You know you've seen it. I've seen it like three or four times. Some of us went to the theater and saw it a bunch of times. And film critics were baffled. They were like, all right, it's a superhero movie. What's going on? But for an artistic genre and industry they failed to see what is irresistible about this image, this image of Wakanda, the power and the impact and the hope building of this image, not just because we see beautiful paths and people, but because Wakanda in our imaginations sparks us to come alive. The thought of the homeland lost to so many people generations ago, thriving, existing in secret. For those of you who don't know, Wakanda is the place where a meteorite made of vibranium struck the earth, affecting the wildlife and creating a heart-shaped herb that gave superhuman powers to those who consumed it, creating the first Black Panther to be followed by many after the thriving and the building of this community is itself inspirational. This is an origin narrative. This is mesmerizing in the telling. I almost put the clip up for this sermon because it's beautiful. The story of a home far off yet alive in our mind's eye. Does that sound familiar to you? The story of what is and always has been but is not yet 
Does this sound familiar to any of you? The story of the kingdom of heaven where all, where the last shall be first and the first shall be last. This is irresistible. Wakanda, the place of abundance that moves us past this scarcity mindset where we don't hoard possessions, yet instead we pool them and together we thrive. If we read texts like this one in Acts, like Afrofuturism of their time, of utopic possibilities of their time, do we feel re-inspired? If this is an actual glimpse of the resurrection, it comes in pieces, right? So we need to reimagine it again. And it is our duty to practice reimagining, to take texts like this scripture and see them reflected in culture today. We need to keep writing the next testament. We need to tear the back page off the Bible, like Bishop Flunder says, and continue to write this future, continue to imagine I can't talk about Afrofuturism without considering the mother, the mother of the movement to so many, Octavia Butler. When, when asked why she wrote science fiction, she said, I was attracted to science fiction because it was so wide open. I was able to do anything and there were no walls to hem you in and no human condition you were stopped from examining. Many are looking to Octavia's work right now in this time of pandemic. She wanted to set her mind free. So within a book that talks about the end, we, we see a picture of utopia as well. She created a theology in these books, y'all. This is our next testament. We need to ourselves continue to write and feed that creativity within. There is a movement right now called Octavia's Brood. It's activists, culture shifters, artists who are writing in the, continuing the story of Octavia's work. They are using it for a tool for social justice, a tool to awaken our imagining. What if we could imagine beyond, right? This is coming from an old hippie who used to live at a commune. Yeah, let's make a commune. Newsflash, it didn't work. We need new images, right? So let's move toward this future. Images beyond this corrupt system, one where we can find shared mutuality. I hearken back to the poem that I, that I read by Hafiz. My name is not complete without yours. I am made whole by your life. Each soul completes me. In order to truly embody the words of need you to survive, shared mutual destiny is what we need to grow and change through this time of disruption. Could this crisis be an intervention, an invitation to reimagine, to see the resurrection, to re-engage, to re-ground ourselves, to truly become a co-creator, to recognize the value of creativity and creation, the value of groundedness and place and home, yet with imagination to explore what communities could be. Park Avenue, this is where we can see that you can't stop the resurrection. It shows itself in our imaginings and the establishment of new systems of value, new economies of abundance, people exchanging goods with their neighbors in need, sharing and partnering and buying toilet paper together. I asked this question this week to people on the interworld and saw so many examples of the new economy of abundance. I heard so many stories, stories of giving supplies and food to those in need, delivering meals to essential workers. In my neighborhood, my neighbor just came over the other day and gave us some Clorox wipes. I guess I had forced some hand sanitizer on her the week before, but Right now, people are willing and ready to envision a new future. It's already happening with Wakanda Dream Lab and Octavia's Brood. Let's join them in picturing and shifting the world. Let's not go back to normal. What is normal? Normal is marginalization. Normal is the economy that devalues. Let's move toward a new future, a new beginning a new resurrection. 
in this COVID-19 pandemic, when we are changing our behavior and the way that we are social and the way that we organize ourselves, the economy is being reorganized. Let's abandon our relationship with patriarchy. Let's abandon and evolve beyond capitalism and embody utopian futures through art, y'all. Let's do it first. We need to imagine it in our mind's eye. So if you have that pull toward creation right now, follow it, follow it. You know, Grace Lee Boggs, who was a famous labor organizer in Detroit and did so much, said the revolution is advancing humankind to a new stage creativity, social, and political responsibility. We're there, right? The resurrection is the revolution. This is our new consciousness. We can't go back. This is the resurrection. It is now. You can't stop it. May God make it so. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, if we could give Darcy an amen. Amen. Uh, hand clap of Wakanda forever, uh, um, <laughs> uh, reminding us that um, we can uh, reimagine the system that we're living in. Uh, we're giving value to people um, who in our capitalistic system um, doesn't give value to. Um, are we trying to do things different? Are we imagining things different? And that's essentially that's where it starts. So Darcy, thank you for that message this morning. Uh, let us move into our time of communion, which is our response this morning. Uh, me and Darcy will tag team. I mentioned earlier, if you have your bread and your juice, uh, we'll be doing this together. But let us uh, come to the table this morning as one, uh, which is freely given and freely received. In the struggle against oppression, Jesus in the face of love to us, showing us the way to abundant life. In word and deed, he announced love, new reign of justice, reconciliation and peace. At the last meal he shared with his friends, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his followers, saying, Share the bread amongst you. This is my body, which will be broken for justice. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Share this wine among you. This is my blood, which will be shed for your liberation. Do this in remembrance of me. God of love, spirit of compassion, bless us in this bread and wine. May this meal be food and drink for our journey, renewing, sustaining, and making us whole. When we eat this bread and we drink of this cup, may we experience again the presence of Jesus in our midst. Amen. And then remember who you are. Do this to remember who I am. Come and remember you belong here. All belong here. Come and remember. Do this to remember who I am. Come and remember you belong here. All belong here. At this table, come as you are. Broken and bleeding's okay. At this table, eat and be filled. Come and drink in this grace. At this table, come as you are. Broken and bleeding's okay. At this table, eat.
Amen. Thank you all for joining us on this Sunday morning. Uh, Pastor Darcy, thank you for the message. Uh, would you please lead us in our benediction? Absolutely. As you go into a world that is too often unjust, take with you these words. Go and imagine boldly live inclusively and serve creatively amen we're gonna have our time of second cup afterwards so um did we close off anyone joining after a certain time um i'm asking the security folk thank you cody and eric for doing security today Thank <laughs> you.